I can't believe how easy it was to create an app in minutes using this one new AI tool I'm about to show you. And the crazy part is that I didn't write a single line of code myself. So in this video, I'll show you exactly how I did it, step by step. The tool I'm using is called Tempo, an AI-powered platform that lets you and your friends collaborate in real time to build apps. You can design and develop in one place with no coding required, even though you still get full freedom over the code. For this video, I'm building an AI-powered allergy checker where you type in a food, and the app will analyze Analyze your allergies and tell you on a 0 to 100% safety scale whether it's safe to eat or not. I'll cover building the app with Tempo, setting up Supabase for the backend setup, and integrating DeepSeek's API to add an AI-powered feature. Step 1. Optimizing our idea. Before we start building the app, we need to optimize our idea's context. And I've actually built a tool that does this for you. Simply head over to buildwithai.io and open the Brain Dumper tool. Once you're there, select Tempo, and here's where the magic happens. Brain dump everything about your idea, literally every single thought. It doesn't even have to be structured, just get it all out. Then hit generate, and this will take around 30 seconds. Now, just copy the context and open Tempo. Step two, building the app. Here, you can literally see how it will look whilst collaborating with your friends in real time. But let's click get started to continue. Now, we have three options. Generate the project with AI, connect an existing project from GitHub, or start from scratch. Of course, we're going with the first option, letting AI generate the project for us. Click next, and now we just need to paste in the context from Brain Dumper. But before we hit generate, let's double check the context to make sure it includes what we want. The context includes a short project overview and a list of all the features. Looking at it now, points 1 to 6 look good, but I'll remove feature 7 since we're not using a database to look up specific foods ingredients. I'll also remove features 9 and 10, but I'll keep the international language support since that's useful. Feature 12 isn't necessary either because we're not implementing a speech feature, and finally, features 13, 14, and 15 are also unnecessary, so I'll remove those as well. Alright, once you've cleaned up the context, click Generate. Now, Tempo takes over so we just have to wait for the AI to finish. We can actually see it thinking through the context we have given it, and now Tempo has generated a PRD. What is a PRD? PRD stands for Project Requirements Document. This is just a detailed breakdown of the app, and it even created a mermaid diagram, which is a visual representation of how everything in the app is connected. I'll show you how this diagram works in just a second. At the bottom, there's a nav bar with different tools. And if you select the pan tool, you can drag around the project to see how all the pages connect. Here on the left side, you can see the AI chat building the project step by step. It's automatically generating the project's wireframes, authentication forms, and the full UI for all pages. Once it's done, we hit a small issue, but no worries. Just click fix with AI, and the problem solves itself. And just like that, everything is working. Now, if we navigate back to the PRD, we can see the mermaid diagram I mentioned earlier. Click this button to view it in full screen, and here's the entire flow of the application. We start on the landing page, we create an account or login. Then, we go through the profile setup, where we enter details like, what allergies do you have? And, what are your dietary preferences? Once that's done, we're redirected to the main page, which is the AI chat, where we can ask food related Related questions. The mermaid diagram also maps out what happens when we interact with the AI chat, and we can also update our profile settings, log out, or edit our preferences. Now that we've seen the entire app flow, let's check how the website looks so far, and it's completely blank. Let's go back to Tempo to fix it. Just mention that the main page is blank, and Tempo will fix it. Now, let's check the page again, and there we go. Step 3. Setting up the database and user authentication. We're landing on the sign-up page, but if we try to sign up, nothing happens. So once again, we'll We'll go back to Tempo and ask it to make sure authentication is working. Once it's done, we can see that AI has fixed the authentication flow here in the chat, and it even corrected user preferences and other settings. Now, there's just one last issue to fix, so let's click the Fix with AI button. And while that's running, let's connect our project with Supabase, which will be our database. Next, we just need to authorize our Supabase account. If you haven't created one yet, make sure to sign up first in Supabase, then click Authorize. Now, let's head over to Supabase.com to create a new project. Navigate to the dashboard and click New Project. Choose your organization. Give the project a name. I'll call it Allergy Checker. Set a strong database password and then click Create New Project. Now we wait for Supabase to finish setting everything up. Once that's done, head back to Tempo and reconnect our Supabase account. Click Authorize again. Select the newly created project and click Connect. 
And just like that, Superbase is connected. If we go back to the AI chat, we can see that Tempo has created a Superbase file in the project code. Now, let's test the website again and see how it looks so far. I'll sign up by creating an account. And no, I won't use the auto-generated password, so you guys can't log into my account. Let me just enter a private one here. Now I get a message saying, email not confirmed, which means Superbase has sent me an email for verification. Let me confirm it real quick. Then let's try logging in again. And just like that, the authentication is working perfectly. Now we're prompted to choose our allergies. I'm actually lactose intolerant, so I'll select milk. On the next tab for dietary preferences, I'll choose dairy-free and low sugar, because I eat way too much sugar. But wait, if the database isn't saving my account, this entire system won't work. Let's double check the database first, because if we don't fix this now, it might cause problems later. Inside Supabase, head to the authentication tab. And here we can clearly see that it's working, because it has successfully saved my email and name and assigned my account a unique user ID. Great. Let's click complete setup. But apparently, this doesn't work? No worries. Let's take a screenshot of the page to give the AI some context. Now head back to Tempo, paste in the screenshot, and explain the issue. When I click the complete setup button, nothing happens. Tempo thinks through the issue and opposes a fix. Now that it's done, let's try again. I'll open the website, sign in, and select my preferences again. Now when I click complete setup, it continues. But if I check the account settings page again, my preferences are not saved. So let's ask Tempo to properly connect the project with Super base. Then it starts thinking through the issue, and here we can see it writing SQL code, which is the coding language used for relational databases. Now we simply need to copy this SQL code to run it in the database. This is the command that tells Supabase how to store our data. Open the SQL editor, paste the code directly inside, and then press Ctrl plus Enter to execute it. Success! No rows returned. Perfect. Let's also check the table editor. Here we can see that AI has added three tables. This is where all the user data will be stored. Now let's go back to Tempo, open the website, and test if the new change actually saves the data. So, I'll head to Account Settings and select Eggs as a test. If I now click Save and refresh the page, then go back to Account Settings. And, it's still marked as Eggs. That means it's finally working. Let's check if the User Preferences table in the database is updated. And there it is. The data is now being saved correctly, and we can see the new row added. Now I'll just quickly change back the allergies to milk, and the dietary preferences to low sugar and dairy-free. If we refresh the database, we can see that the updates are saved. Step 4. Connecting DeepSeek API. Now let's move over to the AI chat and test it out. Okay, the UI looks good, and it gives a score from 0 to 100 just like I asked for, and provides a short explanation. But, this is still placeholder text. That means the AI isn't actually analyzing anything yet. So, let's go back to Tempo and type this. Set up the DeepSeek API to make the AI actually analyze the foods. And let's also ask it to save these analyses in the database. Once Tempo finishes building, let's test the website again. I'll type, this is a test, and it still gives me a good score? That's not right. Maybe I need to type in a real food? Nope. Still, placeholder, text. So let's ask Tempo to check if the API call to DeepSeek is actually running. And I'll also mention that I need to provide an API key for it to work. Now if we click on the AI chat box inside Tempo, we can see the code it just generated. And it looks like Tempo just added the function to use the DeepSeek API. So now, it should be working. Let's close this out and open the website again. I'll test it. And it's still using placeholder text, but I think I know why. We need to add the API key. So, let's ask Tempo where it should be inserted. Ah, now I get it. We need to insert the API key in the account settings on the website. So let's open the app and navigate to account settings. Here, there's a tab called API settings. This is where we need to add the API key. Let's go to platform.deepseek.com and click on API keys. Create a new key and name it whatever you want. Now copy the key, go back to the app and account settings and paste it in. Then click save. Now, let's test it again. I'll try milk chocolate and boom. Look at this. This is insane. It gives me a clear warning that this food is not safe to eat based on my allergies and dietary preferences. And under warnings, it tells me that this food contains milk. Let's try a food that doesn't contain milk. Amazing. The app works perfectly. Let's also make sure the database is saving the chats. Now look at this. Inside Supabase, under the food safety history table, we can see that every food entry we tested is being saved. That means the app is now fully functional. Back in Tempo, let's open the DOM tree from the left menu. Here we can see all the app pages listed. If we open for example the auth container and zoom into the authentication page, we can literally see all the different components used to build the page, just like in Figma. And this is what makes Tempo so good. It's not just for code 
coding and AI, you can design the app visually too. For example, if I double-click the title, I can rename it to something better, like Allergy Checker. Now, under Assets, we can see a variety of pre-made components that we can simply drag into the page to build the UI. And on the right side, we have all the classic design tools, just like any other design program. Here's a cool trick. If you hold control while hovering over components, you can select layers from the bottom instead of the top. This makes it way easier for designing. In the left menu, there are tabs like History. And if we open the file selector, we can see the literal React code that Tempo has built. So this tool is perfect for both designers and developers to collaborate. And as you can see under the source folder here, the project is optimized and well-structured. And if we click Share, we can easily invite more people to the project to collaborate, or one-click deploy it to Versal.